Hello again, this is part two of the iPod Nano tutorial. I'm going to use this image from Apple's website as a reference. And we're going to start with a basic icon structure. So take the rounded rectangle tool, click once on the artboard, make a square icon with about a five point corner radius. We want to add a gradient to it, so I'm just going to remove the stroke and then fill it with this gradient that I've already made. Now the gradient needs to go in the other direction, 90 degrees that is, so I'll take the gradient tool and just drag up with it like that. Now I can adjust the color position directly on the object by using this gradient annotator. And that looks pretty good, except I think it needs a little bit more of a highlight at the top. So I'm going to add a color stop by simply going to the gradient panel and then dragging out a white swatch at the very end of it there. And again I'm going to go back with the gradient annotator and adjust that color stop just so it reaches the top of the object. So it looks like there's a bit of a light source coming from above. And I want to give it a little more dimension, so I'm going to add an inner glow effect. Select it and go up to the effects menu to stylize inner glow. Choose screen as the blending mode. Click on the swatch here and I want white. I give it an opacity of 40% and a blur of three points going from the edge. Now this would be a good time to check your document raster effects settings, which are under the effect menu. Right now it's set on 72 PPI, which is a screen resolution. If you wanted to print this in various ways, you would want to have a higher resolution. I'm going to change this to 300, the maximum. And you can see that that inner glow is now smoother. It's not as pixelated as it was at 72. Now we're going to make that rounded glare that's at the top of these icons. You might want to turn on the smart guides to make it a little easier. I'm going to take the ellipse tool, hold down the option or alt key, and draw from the center of this square. Draw an ellipse just about like that. Now of course I just want the section that's on top of the icon. So in CS4 and previous versions you would take the Pathfinder panel and use the divide function that would separate out all of these shapes and then you'd have to delete the ones that you don't need. With CS5 we have a new tool called Shape Builder which can connect these or if you hold down the Option or Alt key you see that the cursor has a little minus on it it can delete objects. So I just drag onto the part that I don't want and that does the trick. And the great thing about this is that I don't have like five different objects that I have to deal with. It just deletes the part that I don't want and keeps the part that I do without chopping up the other part that I want to keep. Now we want to change this top part to look more transparent so I'll go to the transparency panel and choose overlay as the blending mode. Now I need to change the color and I'll add a black to white radial gradient. Now, of course, this looks a little too dark now, and you can see the thumbnail in the transparency panel. So I'll take the gradient tool and just drag this way out so it's more like bright white to light gray. And I'll nudge that up so it's coming from the very top. The benefit of doing it this way is that you can keep that black and white gradient on the top shape and change the color of the bottom one. So that's how I did the other two colored icons. If you look closely at the icon, you can see these faint diagonal shapes inside. Now there are several ways you could do that. You could use the draw inside mode in CS5 and draw a bunch of diagonal lines. You could draw the lines first and then create a clipping mask. But we're going to do it just sort of quick and dirty with a pattern fill. First copy the icon and then paste it in front. Command C, Command F. Then in the swatches menu, scroll down to the patterns and find the basic graphics textures. You can't see it on the screen now, but here it is. These are built into Illustrator. Now fill the shape that you just pasted with these diagonal lines. Change the blending mode to multiply and make the opacity very low, about 20%. So it's not exactly how the icon is on the iPod, but you can use any of these other pattern fills if you wanted to for a different look. And of course it works on the other colored icons as well. Now we're going to make the atom icon. Draw out a thin narrow ellipse with the ellipse tool. And in CS5 we have a new tool called the width tool. And when you hover over the line you get little handles that you can make the line wider or narrower. So I'm going to make the left and right sides wider and the top and bottom more narrow. Now we need two copies of this that cross. So double click the rotate tool, enter 60 degrees and click copy and then press Command or Control D to duplicate that transformation. Draw a circle and then drag copy it a couple times to make the electrons. Then select everything, go to Object, Expand Appearance, and then if you want you can add them together using the Pathfinder panel. 
and here it is on top of the magenta icon. It has a bit of an embossed look, and to create that, I'm going to copy the atom, change its color to the darker magenta, then paste in front, which will paste the white copy in front, and then nudge it down just a little bit. Actually, that's too much, just a wee bit to give an embossed look. It's not truly an emboss effect, but at a smaller size, it looks okay. For the sake of brevity, I'm not going to go through each and every icon, but they were done the same way as the Atom one. This one may need a little more attention. It looks barely human. The gray icon was done differently. It has an inner glow that goes from the center rather than the edge, so the edges are darker and give it some dimension. The buttons also have an inner and an outer glow, again for added dimension. Each icon has a drop shadow, and I'll add one to the gray icon by going to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow. I've already set this one up to be rather light, 45% opacity, and the X offset refers to the position of the shadow left or right. I'll leave that at zero and just have the shadow showing a little bit at the bottom. Now we just need to create the screen and we're almost done. Draw a square and then go up to Object, Path, Offset, Path. I've entered 24 points. Yours might vary depending on the size of your square. Then I want to round the corners. I'll go up to Effect, Stylize, Round Corners, and choose 20 points as the radius. Now go back to the Object menu and expand the appearance. I'm going to fill the inner square with a gradient made up of a cyan and gray that I sampled from the photograph, and I need to switch it around like I did before with the gradient tool. The outer shape gets filled with black, and here it is with the icons on top of it. Now we need to make some type, and I'm going to zoom way in. I'm going to type my word, then I'm going to copy it and paste it in front. I'll change the front copy to white and nudge it up a little bit so it looks like there's a slight drop shadow on it. So I've added some more details, and the last thing we need to do for the screen is create that reflection or glare on the top. And since it needs to be the same shape as the screen, I'm just going to copy this object and then paste it in front. It needs to be all the way in the front though, so I'll choose Arrange, Bring to Front. Now change the color to white, and in the Transparency panel, change the Blending Mode to Screen. I'm going to knock down the opacity to about 40%, and now I just need to cut off the bottom half. So I'll take the Line Segment tool and draw a diagonal line where I want to divide the object. Then I'll go back to the handy Shape Builder tool and delete the bottom section plus the two lines that are sticking out. Now finally it's time to put the screen on the iPod. And to do that we'll make a symbol out of the screen. Select it and drag it into the Symbols panel. And you don't have to worry about anything in this dialog box because most of it is for Flash. I'm just going to give it a name. Now select the iPod shape and click on 3D in the Appearance panel. In the dialog box, click on the Map Art button, and what you see here is a representation of every surface on the 3D object. You can scroll through them up at the top, and the respective surfaces are highlighted on the screen. We want the front surface, of course, which happens to be number 6. To map the symbol to the object, choose it in the drop-down menu above. Now I have to stop here and let you know that this took about 2 minutes to draw on screen. To make things go faster, click off the Preview button and position the symbol in the window. When you click OK, it's still going to take a long time, and you'll see this message that says Gradients will be rasterized. We have a really complicated symbol with gradients and effects, and that's what takes it so long to render. It also makes it look kind of bad. If I zoom in a bit, you can see ugly dotted lines where the rasterization has occurred. So to get it to look better and to go faster, we're going to cheat a bit and rasterize the whole screen. So select the screen shapes and go to Object Rasterize. In the dialog box you have a choice of the resolution quality, and I'm going to pick High. And also remember to click Transparent, otherwise these corners will show up as white. Now drag the rasterized object into the Symbols panel and map it to the 3D object as you did before. And there's your Partial Vector iPod Nano.